In the week ending on January 16th, 2016, Apple released new beta versions of iOS, watchOS, OS X, and tvOS, in addition to disclosing its plans to eliminate some of its services. Here comes this week's Apple News in the second episode of Apple Wedge Weekly by Wear Notice iOS 9.3, the beta version of iOS that came out this week, even got its own dedicated page on Apple's website. No, not the Apple developer website, but the actual Apple website. This is extremely odd because minor updates, like iOS 9.3, typically aren't featured on the Apple website before they're released in a stable form. However, this may be a move in the right direction for Apple, since the iOS 9.3 beta does contain a good number of desirable features. So then, what's so special about iOS 9.3? Well, for starters, it has a new feature known as Night Shift, which allows you to limit the amount of blue light that your screen emits. In doing so, Apple claims that it will be easier for you to sleep, since looking at blue light before going to bed is said to cause sleep problems. But the thing that Apple forgot to tell you is that you can't sleep while texting on your iPhone or playing video games on your iPad. So if you tend to stay up all night on your iOS device, don't expect iOS 9.3 to magically give you better sleep habits. After all, you may not even want to use Night Shift since it creates an orange glaze that covers your screen when turned on, which prevents your iOS device from displaying any true-to-life colors iOS 9.3 has some other new features baked right into it, but none of them are really groundbreaking. They include Touch ID or Password Protected Notes in the Notes app, as well as some improvements to CarPlay and the News app. The Health app has also been enhanced to finally integrate data from the Activity app into it, which is great for Apple Watch users who enjoy using their smartwatch as a fitness tracker. Speaking of the Apple Watch, Apple decided to fix a relatively unheard of problem with the device in their recently released beta operating systems. This issue, which you likely don't even know exists, is that a single iPhone could previously only pair with one Apple Watch at a time. Now, if an iPhone is running iOS 9.3 or later, it can actually connect to multiple Apple Watches, as long as the Apple Watches are running watchOS 2.2 or later, which was released in beta form alongside the iOS 9.3 beta this week. This is great because now you can finally wear a $17,000 Apple Watch on each of your wrists without also having to purchase two iPhones. But then again, if you have the money to blow on two Apple Watches, why not splurge and get another iPhone as well? The other two operating system betas that Apple released this week were OS X 10.11.4 and tvOS 9.2. OS X 10.11.4 features deeper support for live photos, which are now compatible with the Operating Systems Messages app, as well as compatibility with password-protected notes that are also available in the iOS 9.3 beta. The tvOS 9.2 beta is really just playing catch-up with the software on Apple's other devices. For instance, it adds a podcast app and support for Bluetooth keyboards, which were both included features of the operating system installed on the previous generation Apple TV. The tvOS 9.2 beta also features a new app switcher that looks a lot like its iOS 9 counterpart, in addition to the ability to store your apps in folders. All of the aforementioned Apple betas, iOS 9.3, watchOS 2.2, OS X 10.11.4, and tvOS 9.2 are available to members of the Apple Developer Program. However, iOS 9.3 and OS X 10.11.4 are available to non-developers as well in a public beta form. To get either of these public betas, go to the Apple Beta Software Program website and follow Apple's instructions to install the software. It's sadly time to say goodbye to free iTunes Radio, as Apple announced this week that iTunes Radio, the company's radio-like music streaming feature previously available for free, will soon only be accessible to Apple Music subscribers. The company stated that this transition will take place at the end of January, with Beats 1 remaining the only free iTunes Radio station. In other news, Apple announced that the company is abandoning iAd, the company's ad-serving platform, on June 30th, 2016. Apple says that no new apps will be able to utilize iAd, but current advertisements on the platform will still be shown, and developers will continue to make money off of the advertisements with their apps until June 30th. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe to the Wear Notice YouTube channel for more tech-related videos, and don't forget to watch new episodes of Apple Wedge Weekly when they come out on Saturdays. Also, if you like written content, navigate to the Wear Notice website at wearnotice.com for more tech news, reviews, and how-tos.